Howdy YouTube. I thought I'd make this video on cup and cone adjustment um, and proper preload because uh, there's a lot of them out there but none of them seem to show in detail uh, how much play you're supposed to have and that's right you are supposed to have play in these hubs um, before you quick release skewer them into the frame at which point when you tighten them up in the frame that play will go away and the reason you don't want these things firm all the way before they're done up in the bike is that when you put that quick release skewer on it flexes the axle and it pushes more on those bearings and they will wear out prematurely I've got a wheel or a hub in the back that wasn't properly adjusted when I bought the bike and I didn't check it and that hub got really bad within about a thousand miles and had to be replaced so I'm going to show you how I do this hopefully I can get it on camera and maybe that will help you figure out where yours need to be um, because it really is uh, a bit of a mystery if you haven't done it hopefully I can demysteryify it a little bit this is uh, I think it's FH M8000 it's a Dior XT uh, and a brand new uh, it's a brand new wheel I just built up for a custom recumbent bike you can still see the wheel stand right there and I found out when I buy it when I bought these before this hub was you know a bear hub from the store that they come and they are adjusted a bit too tight in other words there's no play at all in the axle now, if you read online you go to sheldonbrown.com they'll tell you that you should check this thing like by figuring out if it's a pendulum right so you hold it up in the air and you see if it'll pendulum well when you got brand new grease packed in one of these new hubs they often won't pendulum at all just because of grease friction so that's not in my opinion a very good way to try to judge this in my opinion the best way is by feel maybe by sound if you're lucky and so what you have to do is when you have one of these brand new hubs you're going to grab well in this case it takes a five millimeter hex which goes holds the axle and you, you have to work from the non-drive side really five millimeter hex and then a 17 millimeter cone wrench will go on there and what you're going to do is loosen that to the point where it gets pretty darn wiggly and I'm not going to redo that now but at that point you can start very very slowly like a 20th of a turn at a time you will be holding this portion still and you'll be tightening this and it has to go by trial and error it's almost impossible to do this um, in a way that lets you just do it and fix it and so what you'll end up doing is after you get to a point where you think it's fairly tight uh, you need to keep a little bit of play and I'm gonna see if I can get it on the camera I can feel it if I hold this thing I'm holding the wheel in my lap having a tire on it helps stick my chin on it my face and I can wiggle you hear that I can wiggle the axle a tiny bit it's harder from the far side but from this side you got people walking around upstairs hold still goddammit up there okay All right, you can hear that and feel it and see it, I think. What that is, is it's a tiny gap between the cup, cone, and bearings. Um, so I can move it side to side, I can move it in and out. I get a little bit of it, right? If you ride like that, eh, probably not so great for the bearings. But we won't be riding like that, and here's why. We won't be riding like that because the bike's going to be clamped into the rear of the frame using a quick release skewer right so in order to simulate that in my lap without having a bike frame around a while ago I cut a 
couple of pieces of thick aluminum and I put a hole in them suitable for the axle 10 millimeters that way I can clamp the wheels into a fake bike frame before I get out of the basement and I can check to see if the play in the bearings disappears when it's tightened. So I'm going to put this on, tighten it down, open the cam, get it so it starts to tighten when it's about halfway, which is about there, and clamp. Now we will see if we get the same bearing play. And there is none. Zero bearing play when the thing is tightened. If we loosen, boy, that's on there, tight. We get it again. Tighten. Less. All the way tight. Gone, right? Wheel spins freely. And we can be sure that the bearings are about as loose as they can get and still be firm when clamped in. So that's the way I do it. I'm not an expert, but it's the only way that's ever worked for me. Make yourself a couple of metal dropouts, quote unquote, and check your work over and over again until you get to the point where there's about a half a millimeter of play, a little bit tick, 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 tick when there's no quick release skewer in the hub and when you clamp it down at regular tightness which should be when the skewer starts to tighten it's about halfway that was a little too much there that play should be gone